Time has come, seven hours of sanding and prepping that primer. Getting ready to paint this thing. Weather is beautiful, tomorrow it's supposed to rain, so today it's sunny and plus 14 Celsius up here in Canada. Got my paint, there's the reducer, the paint, the hardener. Already got some in the gun, ran it through the filter strainer. And I've got my pressure set to between 50 and 60 PSI. And since I'm outside, I'm not going to be wearing a ventilation mask or any kind of dust filter because the wind will take it away. I'm not going to move this vehicle out of the way because that doesn't matter. Who cares if it gets overspray on it, but I moved my good vans out of the way. And we're going to start painting it. Hope you like screaming green. Definitely one crazy color. All right, bottom is done. Now time to flip it over. Next. Coat one is done. Now I'm straining the next batch of paint for the gun. Refill the cup gun. Done, at least until I paint the small parts. Kind of a sick green. It's going to get a little bit darker as it dries. But I guess it matches the modern times. No more dull, dark blues like I had way back when. Definitely the green bastard now. Now I just got to paint all the little parts. Like the air scoops and shifter rod. Sure looks different. 
Sure is handy to have a painting stand. Remember, boys and girls, your first coat is the most critical. You put it on thin. Then when it gets sticky, the next coat you put on doesn't want to run and drip and make sags and stuff. The first coat is so important not to try to make it look beautiful. It's still a transparent coat. You just want a nice even texture because it sets the base for painting your whole vehicle so that your texture comes out good at the end and gives you a nice sticky surface that doesn't cause you drips later on. And you always paint systematically. You don't go around in circles and zigzags and stuff like that. You painted a lot of cars in my life. Also, never paint in the sun on a warm day because it'll make your paint all dry and rough looking like sandpaper. You want shade so it has time to flow after you're done laying it on. It takes about a half hour before it even gets to full gloss, sometimes longer. Nowadays these guns are pretty cheap. You can get a decent one for like 60 to 80 dollars. Back when I was young you could only buy, buy DeVille Bliss. They were it's like 250 bucks. They're really nice to use. You run them at 50 to 60 PSI on average for the pressure unless you're doing a clear coat and the clear stuff you spray on at about 75 80 PSI to get a glossier finish. And You can adjust these two knobs. The top one is the shape of the spray whether it's a round spray which is good for painting tubular things or you want a wide fan spray you can turn it and make it you know, eight inches wide. And the second lower knob, that's for adjusting how far the trigger pulls back to how much paint comes out. Always when you pull the trigger halfway, just air. Pull a little more, and you get some paint too. So I have it set for fan spray now, because I was painting a sheet metal surface, and I'll show you what I mean. It's actually a narrow fan spray. I could make it much wider. Now if I wanted to make a beam spray, I turn this in like that, and comes out much narrower. So I could have it come out one or two inches wide, or like eight, ten inches wide if I wanted to. The wider you make it come out, the more paint you got to feed. If you're painting in cool conditions, Use a medium dry or fast dry reducer or thinner, the stuff that you mix with your paint to make it you know, thinner to come out your spray nozzle. If you're painting in hot temperatures, use a slow dry because you always want a nice finish on your paint job and less chance of making drips. Never touch your sanded surface with your fingers or contaminants or dirty hands or something you just ate french fries with. Oil and silicones and stuff like that are your worst enemy. It causes the paint to repel. Never paint under a tree because always little particles of sap and bug shit and who knows what else falls and lands on your paint job. And if you wanted to paint a car with the kind of spray gun like I use and do a good job in your driveway, you would take a garden hose and wet the whole driveway down so the dust on the driveway wouldn't blow up and stick to your paint. I use the fast dry paint because it's cool weather and you can see it's only been like 40 minutes and I can touch it all over.